Welcome again to the One and Only Way Ministries. I'm Pastor Henry C. A. Virginia. I'm your host. As we say, each week we come to you with a Sunday church school lesson. Our plan and our intention is to provide those of you who are in television land that may be Sunday church school teachers, Bible teachers, Bible students, or just those who are interested in the Bible, information that will either help you in your ministry or help you in day-to-day living. Uh, we're currently in the spring quarter where we've been discussing God, the people, and the covenant. Uh, We're in unit one for the month of March where we've been talking about signs of God's covenant. Uh, And we've already talked about the ark comes to Jerusalem, God makes a covenant with David. And now uh, we're talking about God calls Solomon to build the temple. For this particular lesson, we have three topics. Uh, And this is all coming from the book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 28. Uh, David's pronouncements, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. David's charges, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verses 8 through 10. And David's exhortations. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 28, verses 20 and 21. Well, and just before I get into my lesson, I want to remind you that at the end of this uh, show, our slate will come up. It will have our address, our telephone number, our email address, our website address. Write us, call us, email us, or uh, tune into our website and download uh, these lessons and look at them as your leisure. They're usually on there by Wednesday before they go on uh, Time Warner. So please get that information so that you can have it. I thank those of you who have already written, email, or call to let us know that you enjoy this show. I thank you so much. And so uh, we want to take a look now at this first topic. Uh, David pronounces the building of the temple. First Chronicles chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit on upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be thy son, to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgment as at this day. Anybody that knows the history of kings and the way it works, The Bible says that David had called all the princesses and all the rulers and all the congregation. He stood before everybody. And David says, I have many sons. He wasn't neglecting the fact that he had many. God had blessed him with many sons. But Solomon was the youngest of all his sons. And usually... uh, the kingship is passed to the oldest living son. So, uh, in essence, uh, David was breaking tradition. Of course, Israel hadn't been in this thing that long because Saul was the first king, and, uh, and, and God decided not to use any of Saul's sons uh, to follow in his reign, he chose David. He told him, I'm going to get my own king. I gave you the opportunity to pick yours, and you see, it, it happened just like I told you. He took your money, he took everything, and he got the big head about being the king, so I'm going to choose my own king, a man who follows after my own heart. So he chose David, and even though David himself had messed up. And the fact that David uh, wanted to build him a house 
because he had messed up and God said he was a man of war and he had blood on his hand. But at any rate, he says, uh, God has chosen you, Solomon, to build this house. He, he has chosen you uh, to be his son and, and he will be your father. Uh, and, and so God chose Solomon, and God has a peculiar way. He never does it like we think we, uh, he ought to. His ways are different than our ways. His thoughts are different than our thoughts. His operations are different than our operation. He uses different ways, different techniques, other than what man thinks he ought to. Because we're down here. Uh, struggling in this wilderness, and he's up there in heaven looking over the whole matter. And so uh, he says, of all my sons, he, he chose Solomon to sit on the throne and rule over Israel. And, uh, uh, and so, Solomon, you have not only been selected to uh, be my heir to the throne and, and be the next king of Israel, uh, but God has also appointed you to build his house, to build his courts. And uh, he says, and then I'll be, if you do that, you'll be my son, I'll be your father. And then he says, uh, he promised, I will establish Solomon's kingdom forever. Now here it goes. Whenever God makes a promise, and you go look at all the promises, there's always a condition for him to fulfill his promise. Except when he made the covenant with Abraham and said, I'll make you father of nations. Abraham did not have to do anything. God just bestowed that upon him, just chose him. Out of all the, the men in the earth he could have chosen, he chose Abraham uh, to be a father of a great nation. And he says, now I will establish the kingdom of Solomon forever if he will be constant or even maybe consistent to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. In other words, even though Solomon, if we, you find it, he was a young man but he had kept the commandments and the ways of God. You'll find that when Solomon took over the kingship, he wasn't but 16 years old, but he had walked his heart, the book says, followed after God. And my brothers and sisters in television land, uh, you may do some things. Uh, you, you, you may get out of the way, get off track. Uh, Satan may sift you a little and Satan may get after you and dog your trail, cause you to stumble, even cause you to fall. But as long as your heart really legitimately follows after God, we have a forgiving God, a merciful God that will bless you in spite of the fact that you let Satan use you, you let Satan dupe you, you let Satan trick you. And many of these men let Satan invade their lives, but because their hearts followed after God, he still blessed them. And so he said, you know, Solomon, if you keep my commandments and you keep my judgment, then I'll be with you and I will cause you to do great things. And we know, if we've studied the life of Solomon, we know that God kept his promise even to Solomon. And we're going to find out uh, here later what he tells David. And David charges Solomon, First Chronicles uh, 28, verses 8 through 10. So let's look at these next few verses. Now, therefore, in the sight of all of Israel, the congregation of the Lord, and in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land, 
and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. So here it is now. David knows that his days are numbered. Uh, David knows in his heart that he's coming to the end of his time. And so before he leaves the earth, he makes sure that Israel knows, all the congregation knows that what he desires, what he commands. He turns over uh, even the kingship to Solomon before he dies. He, he leaves him with the task of building a sanctuary for the ark of the covenant of God. That was David's desire. If you go back uh, to the last chapter uh, or the last lesson, rather, that we studied, where David told Nathan the prophet, I want to build God a house. I want to do it for him. And if you read, if you study this chapter, chapter uh, 28, uh, you'll discover that it, 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 not only did he leave him with the assignment, but God gave David explicit instructions on how he wanted the house built, and David passed them on to Solomon. I mean, it's, it's laid out perfect. Yeah, Solomon didn't have to uh, 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 get an architect to, to lay him out no blueprints to, to build the temple. I don't know where David got it from, but the Bible said the Spirit gave it to David. And David had it documented so that he could pass it on to Saul. I mean, it, it, it goes from how large, how far, how big, how high, how wide, it, it, even all the way down to the vessels, the sacred vessels, you, how, how heavy, how, whether they ought to be silver, whether they ought to be gold, whether it's brass. He had explicit instructions on building this house. Not only was he called, and you know, that's the way God is. Sometimes he doesn't always give us all these instructions beforehand. He just calls us to do an assignment. And uh, like many, we shouldn't just ask. We should just do them because he will. God knows uh, what he wants us to do, and he will be sure. Sometimes we, 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 we wonder and we're frightened. I know I am. God, what is it you really want me to do? Because I, I, I'm like, I'm stumbling in the dark. I don't know. Uh, David even said, I don't know whether to turn right. I don't know whether to turn left. I don't know whether to go forward. I don't know whether to go backward. I don't know whether to just stand still. And sometimes you just, he learns, that sometimes you just got to wait. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And so he gives these instructions to Solomon. Uh, he charges Solomon uh, in the sight of, he says, I'm doing it in the sight of Israel and all the congregation. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not trying to slip things in through the back door. I'm just going to tell you what I want. I'm going to tell you what God has told me. I, I did not do this. It was God that deemed it. It was God that, like he chose me over all of my brethren. He chose Solomon over all of my sons. God works in mysterious ways his wonders to perform. He plants his feet upon the sea and he rides upon every storm. That's what the songwriter came to a conclusion. That we just sometimes, he, 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 even uh, David said, oh, his ways, I wonder at them. 
They're too high for me to attain to. The way he does things is beyond me. And if you study the Bible, you discover that God does things and we just don't understand them. We'll be baffled. We'll be uh, befuddled. We'll be astonished. We'll be amazed. He's just an amazing God. And so he, he, David tells him, he said, if you will seek after God and keep his commandments, then you will flourish in this land and you will leave a great inheritance for your children. He says, just like God has given an inheritance from me to you and my children, he's going to do the same thing for you. He will do the same thing for you if you will keep his command. Because I, I, this same writer, David, wrote in one of the Psalms, I can't remember, he said, if you will walk upright before me, I will bless you, I will bless your seed, and I will bless your seed seed. Some folk just don't understand. They don't get it necessarily sometimes because of their goodness and their graciousness, their kindness to God. Some of us are living off of our forefathers' prayers and our forefathers' work. God just blesses us because he promised it that way. And even though some of us are untrustworthy, we betray him, we deny him, he blesses us because he promised your grandfather, he promised your father, your mother, your grandmother, your aunts, or somebody that prayed for you. He said, if you walk up right before me, then I'm going to bless your offspring, your seed, your relatives. So he tells Solomon, if you just do good, walk upright, keep his commandments, keep his judgment, then you will be blessed and your children will be blessed not just now, not just in the next generation, but he says forever. Ooh, that's a long time, you know, forever. And Solomon, uh, if you know the God of thy father, in other words, if you know my God, Solomon, if you follow after my God and serve him, watch this, it says, with a perfect heart. That, 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 now, you know, whenever you see that word in there, that word perfect doesn't mean that you don't sin or anything. But it does mean that you serve him with a complete heart. Your, your, your heart is totally toward God. How, and some people will ask, well, Rem, how can you be to your heart be totally turned to God, but yet you sin, yet you do things that are displeasing in his sight. Because if you serve him with all your heart, then you have sense enough to go back and fall on your face and say, God, forgive me because I've sinned before you and I've messed up again. Have mercy on me. And that's what a, a, com a perfect, a complete heart, a a pure heart that, that loves God will do, he says, and a willing mind. Yeah, you know. And, and, and Paul gives us some insight on that because he says, my flesh messes up, but with my mind, with my spirit, I serve him every day. Yeah, yeah, my flesh gets in the way. It messes me up. And I think it messes all of us up. Listen, God and he searches all hearts and understands all hearts. He understands even uh, our thoughts. And, but David says to Solomon, if you seek him, you will find him. Uh, but if you forsake him, he will cast thee if you turn your back on God, if you walk away from him, if you reject him, if you refuse to acknowledge him as the Lord of all, then he will forsake you. But if you recognize him, 
then he will bless you. He will keep you. He will protect you. He will do all the things that he promised us he would do. And listen, some people get confused because as we look around the world, if somebody's got more than we have, we think God thinks more than, than he does us. But let me tell you something. What they have does not always come from God. Amen. Let me say that again. What people have does not always come from God's blessings. Satan has a way of blessing his imps too. How else does he get them to follow them unless he gives them what he doesn't really own, what he doesn't really have, but he makes a way. He, he gives them devious plans and ways to obtain what they want. And then they follow him. But they don't understand they can have the same thing if they follow God. God will bless you. He will keep you. He will prosper you. So David says to Solomon, take heed now. For the Lord has chosen you to build for him a sanctuary. And so this is the commandment that David gave. It was real simple. Be strong and do it. I know we have all these sayings around that people say, and, and sometimes we think we come up with something new. Just do it. I, I think that, that maybe somebody <laughs> saw this, and they took, took a page from David's book when he told Solomon, You've been given orders. You've been given an assignment. Just do it. Amen. And so let's take a look at this final uh, topic, David's exhortations, verses 20 and 21, which says this. And David said to Solomon, his son, be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my Father, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And behold, the courses of the priests and the Levites, even they shall be with thee for all the service of the house of God. And there shall be with thee for all manner of workmanship, every willing, skillful man for any manner of service. Also the princesses and all the people will be holy at thy commandment. So listen, David says uh, to Solomon, much like, Moses said to Joshua, be strong, be of good courage. He said, you don't have to fret. You, you don't have to be scared. Uh, you, you don't have to be amazed or dismay about what's going to come. And I think David was giving him a little warning. There's going to be some strange things that occur to Solomon. There's going to be some Funny coincidences and stuff may not work smoothly all the time. So don't be dismayed when, when Satan interrupts, when, when Satan messes with you. He says, uh, be of good cheer. Be of good courage. Watch this. For the Lord my God, he will be with you. He won't fail you nor forsake you. That's in Joshua also. Look like he's quoting from, from Joshua. It's also in Hebrews where he says that. And so this is what Moses passed on to Joshua. This is what David is passing on to Solomon. Words of encouragement. Uh, he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And that's good news. Because God still works like that today. You don't have to be amazed. You don't have to wonder. God still works like that today. 
If you have an assignment, just do it. Do what God has assigned you to do. Don't try to do what he's assigned other people to do. See, David couldn't do it. It wasn't his assignment. God said, it's not yours. It's, I'm going to leave it for Solomon to do. He says, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. And so that Solomon knew he was on good ground. Watch this. He said, all the priests and all the Levites are with him. And, and, and uh, all the workers you need for the workmanship, carpenters and electricians, silversmiths and goldsmiths, whatever you need, Solomon, they're already there. Every skillful man for every manner of service and even all the princesses who could be jealous and envious because the assignment wasn't given to them. They are with you. And see, that's what you got to understand. The assignment may not be yours to do, it, it, to be the commander in chief. Solomon was the commander in chief. It says so right here. But you have to fall in line under the leadership that God has placed you. He said, and all the people, everybody in the congregation, and he told it to them right in front of their face so that they didn't have to hear. He said, God has told me, Solomon, to tell you this. So the people knew that it came from God through David to Solomon. From God to David, through David to Solomon, to the people. And that's the way God works sometimes. He, 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 he works through people for people. Well, my brothers and sisters in television land, uh, we've come to another end of the session. We pray that something has been said once again to help you. Again, at the end, our slate will come up. Address, telephone number, email address, website address, uh, write us, call us, email us, or download. We have current lessons, we have previous lessons, and we have future lessons. So please, Tune in again and may God bless you. Like the Holy Spirit, you need to try it sometimes. Uh, ain't no spirit like the Holy Spirit, you need to try it sometimes.